A very good evening to one and all. Today we are starting with a webinar of five lecture series given by Father Ignacy Mutu. Today's topic is on medicinal plants, scientific validation. Reverend Father Dr. S. Ignacy Mutu, S.J., is a Jesuit priest belonging to an international religious congregation, Society of Jesus. He was born on 9th September 1948 in Siddhalachari, Tani district. He did his initial schooling in the village. He studied in St. Mary's Madurai and St. Joseph's College, Trichy for high school and pre-degree. He studied his BSc Botany at Loyola College, Chennai in 1969 to 1972 and secured distinction and university second rank. He completed his MSc Botany at St. Joseph's College, Trichy from 1976 to 1978 securing university first rank and gold medal. He completed his MPhil in 1982 and PhD in 1985 in the field of genetics from the University of Delhi with outstanding merit and his DSC in the field of plant biotechnology from the University of Madras in 2001. He is one of the very few scientists to acquire this degree. He began his teaching career in 1980 at St. Joseph's College, Trichy, and continued to be there till 1992, serving also as director of hostels and vice principal. In 1992, he was principal of St. Javier's College, Palayam Kottai. In 1993, he was assistant director of Entomology Research Institute, Loyola Loyola College, Chennai. In 1996, he became the director, Entomology Research Institute, Loyola College, Chennai. In 1997, he became the principal of Loyola College, Chennai. In October 2000, he was appointed vice chancellor of Bharatiya University, Coimbatore. In June 2002, he was appointed vice chancellor of University of Madras, Chennai. He was the director of Entomology Research Institute, Loyola College, Chennai, for nearly 20 years. And presently, he's the director of Xavier Research Foundation, St. Xavier's College, Palayam Kottai. As principal and vice chancellor, he made a mark in administration and academic reforms, like introducing teacher evaluation by students, establishing poor students' scholarship, introducing choice-based credit system, introducing semester systems with credits, compulsory social service schemes, and transparency system of handing over the photocopy of all the answer sheets to the students. Apart from being an able and good administrator, he is known all over the world as a good scientist. He has published more than 800 research papers and 80 books. His articles have been cited more than 25,000 times by other scientists. Due to his great contribution to research and publication, Loyola College has been ranked second best in the country with a score of 100 out of 100 for research and publications by MHRD New Delhi. Some of his books on biotechnology, bioinformatics, and environment are used as textbooks in universities and colleges. His books, Basic Good Manners, Values for Life, Being Happy and Successful, Skills and Qualities for Effective Life, Shining in Life, and Tips to Study Well in English and Tamil are used as textbooks for value education and personality development in many universities and colleges. His Tamil book on environmental awareness got the best book award from Tamil Nadu government in 1995. He was awarded Tamil Nadu Scientist for Life Sciences in 2000 by the Tamil Nadu government. He was also given Kamarajar Award for research on environmental management by 
the government of tamil nadu in 2009 the royal entomological society london awarded fres the fellow of royal entomological society for his outstanding contribution in entomology he is also a fellow of the national academy of agricultural sciences new delhi he is an emeritus scientist of ugc csir and icmr new delhi he has carried out already more than 40 major research projects funded by the government agencies he has helped more than 100 students to get their doctoral degrees he has many patents for neem an eco friendly bio pesticide was developed by him one insect species is named after him jacktrips ignasi muttui and one natural molecule is named after him ignasio mycin he developed xavier herbal hand sanitizer to fight against pathogens including covid-19 he has also visited many countries such as usa japan germany switzerland australia and saudi arabia as a visiting scientist scientist american biographical institute usa and international biographical center england have identified him as one of the good scientists in the world he is identified as one of the top 1% scientists in the world in the field of biology based on citations and his publications by professors of stanford university usa in their publication dated 16/10/2020 in flos biology this is the bio data of the eminent father ignacio mutu to whom we are all eagerly waiting to hear now over to father ignacio mutu thank you emilia for your long uh, introduction and uh, i'm really happy to join all of you in sharing a few ideas related to the first uh, lecture of this series the first lecture is uh, going to be related to medicinal plants and scientific validation hope you can see the slides all of you yeah yes father okay yes father very now, clear yeah thank you thank you once again for the kind and nice words and uh, also the invitation to uh, join you all in this uh, great webinar series that you are all organizing i am really happy that uh, goa province is taking this initiative to help people to get the general knowledge okay now uh, coming to the topic today we are all aware of the importance of medicinal plants and in india we have a great base for uh, plant based medication and uh, for uh, human beings this has been very important area where people have been using it from the beginning of human civilization and uh, the new discoveries of medicinal uh, plants so called the medicines also are contributed by the traditionally used materials particularly medicinal plants because they are able to give some new drug like molecules and in fact today there is a scientific evaluation to tell us that nearly 25 to 30% of all the medicines that are available allopathic medicines are derived from medicinal plants and so on and so very great uh, treasure we have and it is up to us to really have some knowledge and promote it also in a bigger way india as you know is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries and we have a tremendous amount of biological diversity also traditional knowledge systems the traditional knowledge systems relate to ayurveda siddha yunani and so on and also folklore a lot of tribal people and other folklore people have a great tradition of transmitting their traditional knowledge and particularly on the use of medicinal plants and uh, there is a small contribution by us in the global market for medicines particularly related to medicinal plants but unfortunately our share is very very small compared to many other people and uh, 
why there is this uh, little lacuna is because there is a need for scientific validation and therefore very important for us to look into before i go into the details i want to share this uh, nice story of this lady yu yu tu she was a lady born in china in 1930 and at the age of 85 she was given half of the nobel prize for physiology medicine for developing a drug from plant to combat uh, malaria you know the story how malaria has been affecting for a very very long time and, and this lady had no real degree but was involved in a lot of this research from the beginning and she was the leader of uh, the big group that was really trying to find some medicine and through their literature search from traditional medicine uh, they found one plant artemisia annua having a great potency to fight this kind of uh, mosquito problem and uh, so they collected all the recipe that were traditionally available checked them analyzed them and ultimately they were able to come out with the modified synthetically modified drug for malaria you know before this was found artemisin you know the jesuits were the one who introduced uh, this quinoin we know no chinkona from chinkona bark we used to get this medicine quinoin to fight malarial parasite and uh, this was discovered by our jesuit fathers who were missionaries in in uh, peru and in the mountains when they were able to see the tribal people that uh, were using this to fight this mosquito menace they promoted this all over the world and this was used for almost 200 years until this uh, new artemisin was found so this story gives us a very important idea that is it the preparations uh, which we are using or ayurvedic preparations or unani preparations they all have very great importance for future provided they are scientifically validated now documentation and validation of uh, traditional claims uh, from tamil nadu this is what we have done in our own laboratory with the help of my scientists and students you know there are lots of plants which are used to uh, manage not only simple diseases but even chronic ailments and therefore these plants are known to be used in medicine but many of these claims which are given by either siddha doctors or ayurveda doctors and they have not been scientifically validated or verified to fill this gap we have been working on some of the plants which people are suggesting when i say scientific validation it means we have to check them by giving to animal models and also if humans are taking take various parameters from these animals and humans check them for their efficacy and ultimately publish them in reputed journals so that the scientists outside come to know of this and they will say okay this is scientifically validated and this can be accepted that is what we mean by scientific validation here let me start with the first plant it is called the cassia fistula and this plant is mainly used for diarrhea to treat diarrhea to treat skin diseases and sometimes fever and even leprosy now this is a common plant many of you can easily see also and it is a little kind of a, a tree Uh, which grows uh, very nicely and with beautiful yellow flowers so we took these flowers and uh, because it is traditionally used to, to treat diarrhea and skin disease we took this and we isolated uh, the compounds from this using scientific methodology what is called the column chromatography what we do is we isolate uh, this uh, i mean we pluck these flowers dry them in shade and then make it into powder 
and this powder we soak in a particular uh, solvent like hexane, ethyl acetate, like that, and so on. And uh, we then put it all, uh, we, uh, uh, decant the solution. In the crude, we put it into what is known as a column chromatography, then keep on pouring this uh, solvent one after the other, and we will be getting some fractions ultimately. And each of these fractions we will test against bacteria. And ultimately, they will any fraction which shows activity will again further be column chromatographed and finally compound will come. This compound also will be tested. And then we can say, okay, this is activity scientifically validated. So this is what we did for this particular plant, Cassia fistula. And when we looked at the antibacterial activity, you can see how uh, compared to the standard streptomycin in the last column, the compound rind and the crude extract, ethyl acetate extract, was showing good activity against some of the gram-positive, gram-negative bacteria. What we mean by gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, some of them are easily controllable, some not so easily controllable, and so they are referred to as gram-positive, gram-negative, depending on the stain they take. And many of them we found were coming close to the standard that we were uh, having. So this is one example to show how scientific validation can be done. Again, we tested the same rind compound against fungi. And uh, in fungi also, we had uh, the control uh, ketam, uh, ketoconsor or control and uh, antifungal agent, uh, fluconazole, these are all agents which can be used from medical system. Now we had our uh, rind compound and comparatively also showing equal amount of activity related to the control. So one way, as I told you, is to show that uh, when there is a traditional claim, we can easily also check and find out whether they are useful. The second plant we took was Peltoforum pterocarpum. Uh, the flowers, again, we took up. This, uh, normally, the bark is used to treat dysentery, and is also used for lotion of eye trouble, muscular pain, and so on. But we, I, we took the flowers, and uh, from these flowers, we isolated a compound using the standard methods we call a burgeoning and uh, also uh, it's a kumarin it's a kind of group of compound okay this again uh, we can analyze all these using sophisticated instrumentation to show the structure and so on okay so they are called uh, chromatographic technology then we go for uh, nmr and uh, xrd analysis all these are uh, sophisticated instrumentation to identify the structure of particular compound or a molecule. Okay, so we went in for this and this burgeoning was identified and this burgeoning showed good activity against some fungi compared to the standard and some not so good activity. So it is uh, clearly showing that uh, what people say, okay, this is useful like that and so on can be scientifically validated and say not so good, but some activity is there. <clears throat> the third one is related to Todelia asiatica. Todelia asiatica is uh, traditionally used to, to treat malaria, fever, and the stomach ache, toothache, cough, and so on. And these uh, leaves are used uh, much for this purpose. We again isolated compounds called flindersine and eulopterol from this plant. And uh, these again were identified using sophisticated instrumentation like XRD and the NMR. And ultimately, we tested for antibacterial activity. And you can see also in the slide where both the compounds were compared to standard compound and they were showing some activity, may not be as good activity, except one or two against some of the bacteria that we tested. 
Spheranthes indicus is another plant where traditionally people use it to treat venereal infections. Venereal infections, as you know, are also caused by sometimes uh, bacteria. So here we isolated uh, two compounds, one seven hydroxyfluoride and the another theophene. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> these two compounds were again tested against fungi and bacteria and they were showing a zone of inhibition uh, which was much higher than uh, even the control ones and uh, indicating that some of the claims of our uh, ordinary people, traditional people, uh, Siddha healers and so on, have some validity, scientific validity. And uh, here again, we tested against some of these viruses and they were able to show also some kind of inhibition. Then we also tested the antibacterial activity of Nymphaea stellata. Nymphaea stellata is a plant which you know are called water lily. You will find it in the water bodies, many of them. And the powdered rhizome is given to dyspepsia, diarrhea and homorrhoids and so on. Decoction of the flower is used for diabetes. So these are the traditional claims and we were able to isolate and check. We isolated a compound, elagic acid from the plant and we checked it for activity and some of them were showing good activity. We also checked for antimycobacterial. You know, mycobacterium is one which causes leprosy. And we were able to identify some of them using cell line cultures. Cell line culture, so this Solanum torvum is a special type of plant belonging to Solanaceae family. And this is traditionally used to, to treat pulmonary diseases. So we isolated some compounds and we checked them for the activity. Again, we isolated another compound from Rheim MOD, a modine compound we isolated and uh, this is also a plant which is uh, traditionally used to remove phlegm from uh, our uh, chest. And uh, Aratoda Vasica, another traditionally used plant for pulmonary problems. From here we isolated Vasionone, uh, Vasicine, like this uh, some compounds we were able to isolate. And a few other plants, uh, compounds, which uh, were uh, isolated from uh, some other plants like Costa speciosis, Plumbago, Tarangin from uh, Pungemia. So all these were tested against mycobacterium. And these are the lines, cell lines, which are uh, mentioned here on the top, H37RV, RIFRV, that is a resistant type. Reform is in resistant type, then XDR, they are all resistant varieties of uh, tuberculosis and they were able to check and some of them showed good activity. If you see very low level like uh, 0, 8 and all is a good amount of uh, level of activity which we can show. So this uh, traditional claims of some people has validity. Similarly, the lot of uh, things in the showing. <clears throat> then coming to anti-diabetes, there are also many plants which people claim, uh, you know, there is useful for anti-diabetic activity. And so we also checked some of them. And one is called Nymphaea stellata. The flowers are used uh, by people. And we were able to isolate a compound called nymphaeol. First time to science, we were able to get this compound. And uh, we showed also using animal model that this was able to rejuvenate the islands of Langerhans, what we call the pa pancreatic uh, cells, which secrete insulin. For example, you see the A control, where all of them are staining, it shows they are healthy islets of Langerhans. Then the one which is treated with the medicine, that is to induce diabetes, you see how they all get destroyed. And the third one is a low dose, 
and the fourth is a higher dose of this um, material and it is able to rejuvenate. So the traditional claim of people is to some extent uh, verified scientifically and uh, so we were able to show this to people and publish it also in the papers. Second, similarly, Caesarea esculenta, another plant which is traditionally used for diabetes. We I took the roots, made it into powder, isolated compound, we called 3-hydroxymethyl xylitol. And this again showed very good activity, particularly in these islets of Langerhans, where the regeneration of uh, these uh, insulin cells took place. And both these compounds, for your information, we were able to get patent because they were first time shown to be very, very correct. Then uh, coming to another plant called Phyla nodifola, we again isolated compound, C gamma cetosterol, and we did uh, here molecular docking. Molecular docking is a special type of uh, bioinformatics tool before we go for uh, analyzing using animal models, we can check using this in silico. We call it in silico, using computer animation and things like that. So here, we were able to find how this molecule was able to increase the glucose to diabetes uh, and therefore it was able to control diabetes and this was also very clearly given to us gamma cetosterol and uh, we isolated also another uh, compound from uh, agile marmalose this compound also was able to show activity and this is all using animal model as you can see in the mice model they were able to touch upon at the gene level. We were able to verify whether the gene expression was controlled by these compounds. So they were clearly indicating to us that uh, these uh, compounds were able to help in uh, controlling, at the same time also reducing adipose tissue, that is the fat tissues getting deposited into the body, into the cell. So this was also was proved using these animal models. We also uh, did another study uh, using uh, another plant called Spermacose cispida. Normally these seeds are used for uh, reducing our lipid level in the body. So fat uh, level in the body. And uh, this also has been done using animal model. And uh, it has also clearly shown that uh, the images indicated that uh, the lipid was uh, deposit was reduced, obesity was reduced because of the long time use, for example, three month use of this uh, material, the seeds of this uh, plant. Same uh, thing, we again proved it, making use of uh, the gene level analysis with another compound, bromoembolin compound. This is a, you know, emblica that is we take uh, from uh, gooseberry. We used that and we were able to isolate a compound and that compound we checked for anti hyperglycemic activity and it was also hyperglycemic related to diabetes and we were able to also show it <clears throat> that is a uh, two level the next level was uh, anti cancer activity some of these uh, plants uh, traditionally people say this is used uh, for this purpose uh, for uh, cancer treatment and so on nobody really has checked uh, whether they are used and they are really bringing out the effect which our healers, tribal healers or folklore healers or even <coughs> Siddha or Ayurveda healers suggest. So we again went in and uh, from this plant we isolated a compound and this compound was tested in animal model. Clerodane diterpene was the compound we had isolated 
and this compound was able to bring about this uh, reduction in cancer inducing and also reverting back into the normal liver and so on so this uh, was one of the experiments we did to show that this particular compound had real effect as the traditional healers had claimed with regard to the traditional use of plant okay and uh, inflammation is another important problem all <coughs> people have certain some kind of inflammation in the body because of uh, you know certain uh, age old remedies and so on and uh, there are also plants which are used regularly to fight inflammation arthritis is one example of inflammation the many many kinds are there but we did uh, when people uh, said that this particular plant cleodendron flammidis is used uh, to treat arthritis we were able to isolate compound from this plant of course you know when i say compound we always start with a crude extract then we go for fractions then we go for compound so all of them are tested only those fractions which show activity we take further and only those which show per activity we go for isolation of compound so ultimately our aim is to come to a good compound which can become an allopathic medicine later on that is the purpose okay so that is how we started and in for inflammation we checked this uh, molecule 3 hydroxy 2 methoxy sodium butanoate and <clears throat> again this also showed activity particularly in reducing the gene level expressions related to inflammation tnf alpha is a particular kind of a gene which shows more or less depending on inflammation so when we were able to find out that using this material there was at this act the compound significantly reduced the tnf alpha level which means it has a good activity to control inflammation or arthritis and the same thing we also did it using other types of animal models and also other genes as well okay then you know there is of late there is another kind of uh, disease called this i won't say call it is a kind of a problem where lot of people are coming up with what is called a non alcoholic fatty liver disease you know our livers get fat deposits may sometimes uh, it happens because people drink too much but there are also now people who are having without any alcohols this fatty liver so that is called non alcoholic fatty liver disease and there are also quite many plants which are used for checking this problem and we had isolated quite a few compounds from different plants and so we checked them for example from mango we isolated mangiferin from uh, terminalia arjuna uh, we isolated arginalic acid then garden in then andrographis uh, we isolated andrographolide and so on so different plants we had isolated we checked them for uh, their uh, activity for uh, this uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease using again animal models and uh, the liver was taken and uh, you could see this was clearly indicating to us that uh, even ultrasound scan images very beautifully showing us that uh, there was a control with the help of some of these uh, molecules mangiferin for example again andrographide again was also very useful so what we did was we semi synthetically modified this andrographide and produced uh, new varieties like isoandrographide and so on and uh, again we tested using this uh, uh, animal models and again we they all brought out very good activity this is all published in papers and we also have a patent for this uh, molecule so this is an indication to tell you that 
there is real treasure in our medicinal plants which we can really scientifically validate and once we do this we are able to also appeal to people outside the, our country so that these materials can be used can be also developed into good medicine this is a slide to show you how the liver tissues clearly told us or showed us the reduction in nafld using animal model okay this is all what i shared with you with regard to the medicinal plants now a few slides i will show you with regard to a few others where we did some work using for example microbes there are lots of microbes as you know today so many antibiotics which we are producing are all produced from microbes they are all used for us as a good medicine so they are also useful as uh, uh, molecules for example here we isolated one molecule from a streptomyces species and the, uh, my students and the staff they named it ignaciomycin in my name is also new to science and uh, this uh, we were able to show was uh, having antibacterial and antifungal activity and even anti cancer activity so this uh, we have done quite a lot of work and uh, another molecule we isolated was uh, blumomycin this blumomycin also was showing antimicrobial and anti cancer activity these are all isolated from actinomycetes which are a type of microbes or bacteria which are in the soil uh, bacterium we call it and uh, they also are uh, tested for uh, uh, this and uh, we also have isolated uh, anti cancer flavonoid from another streptomyces species and this are also shown uh, anti cancer activity we normally check in two three ways in not only using animal model not only using cell line we also do in vitro anal in silico analysis as i told you bioinformatics analysis to show that these all these three can be combined together and a, a good uh, scientific data can be presented to people so that their doubts can be cleared so here again we did this uh, uh, docking study and we were able to find that this particular molecule went and docked very well very nicely like uh, the traditional medicine and uh, it was also useful now next uh, one i want to mention is about uh, vector management you know mosquito is one of the biggest problems for human kind they are really enemy number one i will say nothing else matters because they are able to spread diseases in such a big way and therefore uh, managing them has become a very big problem we have tried to do small work in this area but uh, we have not also been very successful but i will mention to you one or two what we have carried out we isolated a compound called confertilin from uh, confertifolin from a particular plant uh, polygonum hydropaper and we tested these against the oil we isolated this oil and we also isolated a compound we tested this against dengue virus aedes aegypti is a dengue virus and this virus we were able to control making use of this and another uh, niloticin a compound which we isolated and this was also showing very good activity against uh, this dengue virus you know these virus uh, sorry these uh, mosquitoes are carriers of viruses that cause disease for us okay so this uh, aedes aegypti is uh, carrying this virus which causes dengue for us and also chicken gunia chicken gunia is also another big problem that has come in the recent past now i have shared with you in a nutshell how and given you some examples to show how medicinal plants are useful and how they have to be scientifically validated 
in order to people make use of it more generously and also to reach out to market particularly outside our country so that they have some basis to say okay this is a scientifically validated so this medicine can be utilized we have a long and timely reviewed and updated tradition of medicinal plant usage in our country and there are number of medicinal plants which have been used in our tradition to treat various kinds of ailments and including chronic ailments unfortunately due to lack of scientific validation there is a very big lacuna existing to reach the global healthcare market therefore interdisciplinary approach is very much needed to uncover the potential that is in us in our country to meet out the demands of a global health care okay this some small patent uh, that we obtained and so on and these are my students who have contributed much to the talk that i shared with you now all outstanding work in art as well as in science results from immense zeal applied to a great idea so if you have an idea we can go ahead and make use of it to bring out something wonderful so with this uh, let me close my slides now ask you for uh, any questions any clarifications sorry my throat was giving little trouble i hope you understand me thank you god bless you father <clears throat> uh, there are a few questions in the chat box yeah yeah you are most welcome yes once i'll read it out for you yeah please is cassia fistula the same as labanum cassia fistula is lab, lab, uh, no, i think it is not no no it is huh? it is labanum indian Lebel labanum Lebel yeah it is okay. in in, Go in konkan Go goan this thing it's called as balo Ah, Goa. Okay. Konkani. Okay. In Konkani, it's called Baro. Ah, okay, good. Okay. Now they are asking whether the presentation will be shared with them or not. You can, you can, no problem. I am okay. happy to share with you. You can, Thank you me. can share it with them. Yeah. I think you have recorded. You can share. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they are asking whether any short term online training will be available for the same we, we have not planned any on time online uh, training when uh, students come to our lab we really train them you know and so short term training like that we give but of course this is very far away when i was in chennai it was much easy for people to come and get training and go but now i am in uh, one corner of tamil nadu you know near kanyakumari palayam kottai so it uh -huh. may be okay. not easy for people to come but um, if they, they can always contact us uh, over uh, email and we will give them ideas uh, they which they can go and carry out in smaller labs nearby and so on or even in colleges okay okay fine sir no yeah yeah how far results of molecular docking comparable with the results of animal models well a molecular docking is only one uh, level of uh, assessing the efficacy okay we cannot it is called uh, it is not it's a dry lab it is called dry lab it cannot be equated to wet lab uh, analysis like using the animal model but it gives some indication for us that activity is possible and therefore we can take it further so in that sense it is useful but it alone will not be enough for us thank you is conducting molecular docking necessary before experimenting on animals it will be useful because uh, it uh, gives an idea okay but we can directly also go for cell line uh, analysis or we can also go for animal model without conducting uh, mo molecular docking study but it will give a good idea because a molecular docking it also gives many other items like atme properties that is whether the solubility of a particular molecule is good 
whether uh, it has any uh, you know toxic effect all that also can be obtained using this uh, uh, bioinformatic tool and therefore if there is going to be very toxic uh, how uh, way to go for animal model you know so that kind of preliminary study will be useful okay yeah. can you please throw some light on insulin plant insulin plant is normally called costus costus speciosus it is the technical term uh, taxonomical name for that particular plant this insulin plant way people call it they they say that it is able to help in preserving our islets of langerhans and help in secretion of insulin we ourselves have done quite a bit of work using this plant we have isolated also some compounds using this costus speciosus published some good papers it is used for diabetes as i said the leaves particularly are used for diabetes and it is referred to as i told you in as insulin plant but uh, the efficacy uh, has not been like what people say that it is secreting insulin or no it does not secrete insulin it only helps in uh, preserving the islets of langerhans or the insulin cells and promotes its good functioning okay okay which are the books you would recommend for understanding the medicinal plants of india uh quite a few good books are available you know medicinal plants uh, i'm just now not recollecting some names but Uh, any any you know there are some good publications from uh, jodhpur uh, scientific publishers then there are also some good publications from oxford and ivh from new delhi and there is also a very good book uh, from uh, mahender pal singh from dehradun these are all uh, some publications i am remembering Uh, check for this public uh, publishers list there you will find some good uh, medicinal plant books uh, which will give you some idea we are now preparing a book which maybe uh, it will take another year before we are able to bring it out common important medicinal plants uh, which we can make use of in our daily life with some scientific data and so on okay okay fine um throughout the slides there were a number of molecules isolated yeah could you brief how exactly you could identify them yeah um, <clears throat> as i said uh, when we are interested in finding out uh, any kind of useful molecule we start from the base the base is uh, the leaf or a flower or a seed or a root or a stem or the bark any part of a particular plant okay so take them dry them in shade and once they are very well dried put it in a mixi make it into a powder once the powder is available take a particular quantity okay so many kg and then soak it in solvent different types of solvent from polar solvent to non polar solvent like hexane then go down to methanol then use in the means you have to soak them separately or you can soak first in hexane the decant it then the same that crude you can make use of for the next solvent like that one after the other also we can do so whatever molecules did not come in hexane will come in the ethyl acetate then it may come in chloroform then it may come in methanol that is the concept okay but sometimes we may not go through all these we may go straight away for a particular one and therefore we we can uh, make use of it the second one is uh, after that you go for activity test when we are doing activity test we will know whether there is a very important 
idea that some activity is taking place or not. If there is no activity, we need not go further. If there is activity, then go for separation called fractionation. That is using column chromatography. Once fractions are obtained, you test again. When there is activity in a particular fraction, go for the molecule isolation. Once a molecule is obtained, it can be in the form of a powder, it can be in the form of a crystal. If it is in the form of a powder, take it and or sometimes, as I told you, also some oil sometimes we get. So all these can be taken to further analysis, making use of what are known as NMR, spectral data, XRD, that is, uh, we, we, it gives all the types of data that is needed. Then we can go for GCM, MSM, you know, that uh, if it is a volatile compound, that will give what are the compounds present. Or if it is a pure compound, it will give you the pure compound name. So this is how usually it is done. There are experts who will clearly indicate studying the spectral data to which group this particular compound belongs like you know as i told you flavonoid or any other and then go up to final identification using different different methodology available in identifying the compound yeah different uh, types of methods are also useful okay but have you printed any books on these medicinal plants and their uses to uh, cure certain ailments no, we have mostly published all these, what I have shared with you, and many more. We have only published in the form of research papers, scientific papers, because they are more important than real. And therefore, as I said, we are only now looking into... We have also brought out uh, books on Siddha medicine, the interviewing Siddha healers and uh, what kind of medicine they use, what kind of plants they use. That we have brought out the compilation, but that is only in uh, Tamil language, local language. We are now preparing uh, to bring it out in English also. And then uh, we have also brought, bringing out flora related to different, uh, you know, all types of not only medicinal plants. So in from our laboratory, we have not done much. But I think uh, Father Bruto from uh, St. Joseph's College, Trichinapalli, had uh, brought out something related to a medicinal plant that may be also useful. You can check that uh, from uh, the website. Okay, Father. Father, any suggestion of use of plants for reversal of liver issues due to diabetes and long-term use of medication? Uh, reversal, you mean for rehabilitation? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but uh, but issues due to diabetes, she's asking for. Yeah, you know, issues related to diabetes, the most helpful is to take some plants which are shown to have scientifically validated activity for diabetes <coughs> and then make use of them. Like simple example, I'll tell you. Jamun, I think Jamun, what is called it is, uh, that is uh, Eugenia Jambalona, we call it uh, taxonomically. In Tamil, we call it novel, uh, Jamun. That uh, seed powder is uh, scientifically proved to give effect in the protecting the Langerhorn, islet cells of Langerhorn and so on. So. When we are able to mix that with our food and uh, make use of it, it generate, generally maintains some good health also. Similarly, jackfruit, for example, not exactly the full fruit. Before the jackfruit is becoming a fruit, the pulp, the so-called uh, uh, less uh, kind of uh, fruit, if that is taken and made use of also, it is useful as a general health uh, tonic. So there are some available materials uh, which can be considered for uh, people who have who are recuperating from uh, these kind of things. Okay. 
Joycey uh, Lorenzo says, thank you, Reverend Father Ignacy Muthu. It was such a detailed and informative session in a short span. OK, that was a compliment. So Frederick is asking, which are the best institutions doing research on medicinal plants in South Asia? Oh, we... Actually, if you ask me some Jesuit institutions, we have, uh, for example, in uh, Gujarat, uh, St. Xavier's, Ahmedabad, they do some work. Then uh, Loyola, Chennai, where I was, we did some work. Now we are carrying out similar work here in Xavier Research Foundation in Palem Kotai. Then if you look at uh, these... Um, Government institutions, there are uh, in uh, Trandrum, uh, in New Delhi, they do some work, but uh, their level of work is uh, much, much different. And uh, therefore, many of these uh, things, as I told you, can uh, they get it published in international journals and so on, at the molecular level, at the gene level and so on. And uh, really, it has not yet come to the popular level of uh, motivating people to scientifically understand and then make use of uh, the medicinal plants. So that is uh, very important uh, for us uh, to look into. Yeah. OK. Father, are there any medicines sold in the market from the extract for diabetes? Oh, yes, quite many, quite many. In fact, when I was in Germany, somebody showed me uh, kind of a pamphlet and asked me whether that plant can be used. Uh, I, I was surprised. It is prepared here in India and marketed outside. So there are quite many formulations uh, which are prepared and uh, given for treating uh, diabetes. And uh, one, as I told you, is this uh, from Embelin. Embelin is a uh, is gooseberry gooseberry juice is prepared and put it in a formulation and it is given uh, for uh, treatment of uh, diabetes but as i told you these are all materials which our people prepare but scientifically they are not validated how it brings out the activity they are not validated that is one re lacuna which we will have to really look into but there are quite a few as i said for uh, Diabetes especially, quite a few formulations or drugs or powders uh, which people give, but uh, I really do not know whether it has any side effect and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then does long-term use of insulin plant cause any side effects? You know, one thing we should be always aware of, you must have heard of that uh, uh, nice proverb, too much of anything is good for nothing, you know. So everything uh, with the kind of uh, measured uh, usage and uh, the medicine also which we take, allopathic medicine, when we use it for a very long time, it has also its own little negative effects. Similarly, also uh, with our uh, materials, unless they have been proved like uh, the food materials that we take. The food materials which we take, which has been, you know, thousands of years usage and people have understood that they don't have any toxic effect, even if we are using it lifelong. Such kind of things, if they have been shown to give us uh, useful uh, effect, then they can be continued uh, for a long, long time. But when uh, there are other things uh, like, for example, a powder or a formulation, that and all, we should take it for some time and then uh, give a break and things like that. That is very important. Because we do not know, you know, which molecule will go and uh, affect our system uh, because every system is not the same. Every system is very different and so some cell may be weak, some cell may be strong. So when a particular compound goes in, particularly with plant formulations, you have so many kinds of compounds. So one of them may go, may become toxic, which we are not really aware of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
can this can this uh, scientific validation of medicinal plants lead to the exploitation or misuse of traditional knowledge linked with tribal people uh, i won't th think so i do not think so because the people uh, when we are interacting with our tribal people and so on we do give them uh, uh, proper acknowledgement we also share if at all any kind of uh, you know royalty comes we, people enter into an agreement and so on so certainly we will not be the scientists will not be misusing that knowledge of uh, traditional people and uh, quite uh, many of them are also now in the available in the public domain and therefore it is not also preserved only within them you know but what is very very confidential and from mouth to mouth uh, trans uh, you know, transferred we should be able to uh, make give them the due whatever they deserve so certainly i would say it will not uh, lead to any misuse but provided we have the ethical you know component built in into the system okay so that does the sar sop plant help in treating cancers yeah which plant you meant sar sop sar sop i guess oh that uh, i am not showing for example uh, curcuma curcumin curcuma that has been shown scientifically validated and shown <laughs> that it is able to also bring down and reduce uh, diabetes so as uh, i mean cancer so there are some uh, natural materials which have been used and which are also proved <coughs> scientifically to reduce cancer uh, growth that particular plant name which you are mentioning i am not aware they say sar sop is good for cancer and it's an anti cancer plant okay, it's muraya okay. Muraya <coughs> reticulator. Muraya reticulator. Muraya. Okay. Yeah, Muraya. Okay, okay. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Anona, Anona, Anona okay. Murikat. Okay. Anona, Anona AC family. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Leslie Pereira is asking any book for layman to read about medicinal plants. I guess yeah. somebody else also had asked it to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would, I, you would able to recall it. I think yeah. you can tell it to us tomorrow. Because that is yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. I will uh, send an email. You can follow it up. Yes, okay. sure. Yeah. Other, I mean, there is one uh, um, suggestion. Father Brito yeah. S J has written some books published on uh, medicinal plants. Pilar Fathers also have a pamphlet. Goa medicinal plants is available at. forest department okay okay so yeah. uh, there is one more comment by father uh, carlos there are around 80 people right now in the presentation what message do you have for them to use for medicinal plants well uh, my simple suggestion is uh, we can by uh, you know little knowledge be very prudent in making use of these medicinal plants because some of them have a great tradition of having been used for many 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 years without any side effects therefore they certainly can be used without much problem but there are certain things which they have not yet scientifically validated or people have not used much such things we should be more and more careful because uh, we may, everything we cannot decide that they are really good for us so that kind of prudence and uh, precaution is very important and uh, secondly our own nation has a good wealth of medicinal plants and therefore uh, having some knowledge about them and uh, also to some extent promoting them is also ideal but for that as i said we need to really be sure that uh, they have no toxic effects no side effects and therefore they are healthy which will be useful for us so only that you keep in mind and uh, give good support to people who are really interested in this so that uh, you based on your encouragement people will be able to do much more work thank you all the best god bless you